Welcome to the video book summary of How to Sell Your Way Through Life by Napoleon Hill. This book was written in 1939 by Napoleon Hill and Wayne, 248 pages. Written in the depths of the Great Depression, How to Sell Your Way Through Life explores a critical component of achievement, your ability to make the sale. Ringing eerily true in today's uncertain times, Hill's work takes a practical look at how regardless of our occupation, we must all be salespeople at key points in our lives. Hill breaks down concrete instances of how the master salesman seizes advantages and opportunities, giving you the tools you can use to effectively sell yourself and your ideas. If you like what you hear, use the link in the video description to purchase the, from Amazon. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of How to Sell Your Way Through Life. It is the power to think my own thoughts and be myself. Character is accurately reflected in one's mental attitude. Without a strong foundation built on positive character traits, success will not long endure. It is virtually impossible to fake good character. Phonies are quickly spotted because they haven't the substance and determination to maintain the charade. Developing good character begins with a positive attitude. Your desire to be a good, decent, honest, considerate person must first take place in your mind. When you make the decision to become a person of character, you also find that you are much more willing to do the right thing simply because it is the right thing to do. Chapter 1. Definition of Salesmanship The master salesman is a master of others because he is a master of himself. Life is a series of ever-changing and shifting circumstances and experiences. Any form of effort through which one person persuades another to cooperate is salesmanship. If a man attains a high station in life, it is because he has acquired or was blessed with a natural ability as a salesman. You can sell your personality. He discovered how to sell his way through life successfully. The great Thomas Edison fell 10,000 times before he made the incandescent electric light work. Do not become discouraged and quit. You will fail once or twice before making your plans work. Women are the greatest salespeople on earth. They are superior to men because they are more subtle, more dramatic, and use greater finesse. Men often believe they are selling themselves to women in proposals of marriage. Generally, however, it is the woman who does the selling. She does it by making herself charming, attractive, and alluring. Selling is the art of planning in the mind of another a motive which will induce favorable action. The master salesman becomes a master because of his or her ability to induce other people to act upon motives without resistance or friction. Study, effort, and experience. The people must be served. In the future, the question of paramount importance will be, how much can I give in the way of service to others, not how much can I get away with and keep out of jail? Men who have imagination will not wait for time to prove their soundness. They will anticipate the changes that are to take place and will adapt themselves to the new conditions. No matter who you are and how much you know, you will not succeed unless you are a salesman. You must sell yourself. You must sell your personality. Your only limitations are creatures of your own mind. You can remove any limitation which you can create. Ideas are the beginning points of all fortunes. Chapter 2, you need intelligent promotion to succeed. All anyone really requires as a capital on which to start a successful career is a sound mind, a healthy body, and a genuine desire to be as much service as possible to as many people as possible. If you wish to get ahead in the world, we must find ways and means to bring ourselves to the attention of people who need whatever we have to offer the world. Building a better mousetrap than one's neighbors will avail one nothing unless sound, intense, and continuous sales promotion is placed in support of the trap. It is each person's duty and responsibility to provide himself with whatever form of media promotion needed to help him attain success in his chosen calling. I get better results by frankness in dealings with people, for I find that direct, straight dealings not only wins friends, but it also holds them. The human ego is a tricky piece of mental equipment. It needs constant protection against all forms of flattery, the one element to which an ego responds most readily. Life is made up of situations and circumstances calling for yeses and nos. The person who negotiates his way through life successfully 
learns to use each in its own proper place. If you would sell your way through life successfully, look around you. See what useful service you can render to as many people as possible. Make yourself of value to others and you will not need to learn the art of flattery in order to win people and use personal influence. Moreover, those of whom you do win will stay one. To be well liked gives one great advantages. Employees are always on the lookout for a man or woman who does a better job of any sort than is customary, whether it be wrapping a package, writing a letter, or closing a sale. Success in any calling is largely a matter of one's being able to negotiate his way through life with a minimum amount of friction in connection with his relationship with other people. Frankness and directness. Seek counsel of men who will tell you the truth about yourself, even if it hurts you to hear it. Mere condemnation will not help bring the improvement you need. Chapter 3. The Strategy of the Master Salesmanship Motive is the seed from which a sale may be germinated. A master because he captures prospectives by his own imagination and makes it work for him. His first move was to lay out a plan of action. Here is where most people fail, because they lack a plan that is definite and sound. The motive of desire for fame and power and the motive of revenge. The master salesman paints a word picture of the thing he is offering for sale, the canvas on which he paints in the imagination of the prospective buyer. The master salesman paints another picture. He omits no detail. He mixes word colorings so they blend with the harmony and symmetry, which captures his prospective buyer's imagination. He builds the picture around a motive which dominates the entire scene, putting the prospective buyer's own mind to work in his behalf. That is master salesmanship. Yet artists are made, not born. They may be born with inherent potentialities for artistic creation, but they become finished artists only by mastering the technique of harmony, form, and color. Showmanship is not only one of the important factors in the master salesmanship, but it is important in practically every other calling. An effective showman is one who can dramatize the commonplace events of life and give them the interesting appearances of uniqueness. Effective showmanship calls for the sufficient imagination to be able to recognize things, people, and circumstances which are capable of being dramatized. People buy personalities and ideas much more quickly than they buy merchandise. Most people are not influenced largely by reason. They are swayed by emotions or feelings. The man who is not capable of arousing his own emotions very deeply is not apt to be able to appeal to others through their emotional nature. To become a master salesman, you must daily engage in study time, reading time, thinking time, and planning time. To be an able salesman, you can almost be anything else you wish to be. Emphasizing the importance of sales strategy or a plan which has been carefully built around the proper motive. If you can't forgive, don't ask to be forgiven. Chapter 4. Qualities of the master salesman must develop. Science has abundantly proved that even a state of mind reflects a physical condition and that chemical and physical factors within the body itself bring about the moods and feelings and thoughts. The list of very desirable qualities. Physical fitness, courage, imagination, speech, hard work, knowledge of the merchandise he sells, belief in the merchandise or service, appropriateness of merchandise, value given, Knowledge of the prospective buyer. Qualifying the prospective buyer. Ability to neutralize the mind of the buyer. Ability to close to a sale. A pleasing personality. Showmanship. Self-control. Initiative. Tolerance. Accurate thinking. Persistence and faith. Habit of observation. The habit of rendering more service than is expected of him. Profiting by failures and mistakes. The mastermind. A definite major aim. The golden rule applied. And enthusiasm. The nine basic motives to which people respond most freely. The motive of self-preservation. The motive of financial gain. The motive of love. The motive of the sex urge. The motive of desire for power and fame. The motive of fear. 
the motive of revenge, the motive of freedom of body and mind, and the motive of desire to build and to create in thought and in material. Weakness in technique, failure to present a motive for buying, lack of persistence in sales presentation and in closing, failure to qualify prospective buyers, failure to neutralize the minds of those prospective buyers, lack of imagination, absence of enthusiasm, the major weakness in personality and habits of a salesman. Number one, the habit of procrastination. One or more of the six basic fears. The fear of poverty, the fear of criticism, the fear of ill health, the fear of loss of love of someone, the fear of old age, and the fear of death. Spending too much time making calls instead of sales. Shifting responsibility to the sales manager. Perfection in creating alibis. Spending too much time in hotel lobbies. Buying hard luck stories instead of selling merchandise. Embeeding too freely the night before. Depending on the sales manager for prospects. Waiting for business conditions to pick up. Hearing the word no. Fearing competition. Devoting too much time to the poultry business. Reading the stock market reports. And plain pessimism. Successful people in all callings never stop acquiring knowledge related to their major purpose, business, or profession. Chapter 5, Auto-Suggestion Your first step in salesmanship Because of the importance of self-selling, the subject of auto-suggestion assumes an important role in the teaching of salesmanship. This is the principle though which the salesman saturates his own mind with belief in the commodity or service offered for sale as well in his own ability to sell. Auto-suggestion is self-suggestion. The subconscious mind is the broadcasting station which voluntarily telegraphs one's thoughts and beliefs or disbeliefs to others. The seven major positive emotions. The emotion of sex. The emotion of love. The emotion of hope. The emotion of faith. The emotion of enthusiasm the emotion for optimism, and the emotion of loyalty. The world is controlled by the emotional faculty. The seven negative major emotions. The emotion of anger, quick and transitory. The emotion of fear, prominent and easily discernible. The emotion of greed, subtle and persistent. The emotion of jealousy, impulsive and spasmodic. The emotion of revenge, subtle and quiet. The emotion of hatred, subtle and persistent, and the emotion of superstition, subtle and slow. Remember that people are motivated to buy or not to buy through their feelings. Remember also that much of what they believe to be their own feelings consist in reality of thought impulses which they have unconsciously picked up from vibrations of thought released by the salesman. Like attracts like. Whom the gods would destroy, they first make mad. Silence is far more effective than words inspired by and mixed with the emotion of anger. Never in history of the world had there been such an abundant opportunity as there is now for the person who is willing to serve before trying to collect. And chapter 6, The Mastermind. Power is acquired through organized and intelligently directed knowledge. The Mastermind Principle makes available unlimited sources of knowledge because one may through its application, avails oneself to the knowledge possessed by others, as well as the knowledge which has been accumulated and recorded. Let us keep in mind the fact that power is the essential for successful achievement in every walk of life. Also, let us remember, power is organized and intelligently directed knowledge. Successful achievement is the result of power. One way to avoid criticism is to do nothing. Chapter 7, Your Improved Concentration Concentration is the focusing of the attention, interest and desire upon the attainment of a definite end. Concentration is defined as the habit of planting in the mind of a definite aim, object or purpose and visualizing the same until ways and means for its realization have been created. Habit may grow out of concentration and concentration may grow out of habit. Any idea plan or purpose or definite aim which you persistently submit to your subconscious mind through the medium of concentration here described brings to your aid the force of infinite 
intelligence until eventually it practical plans of procedure will flash into your mind during your period of concentration. The organized energy. Energy can only be organized through the principle of concentration. It is a fact worthy of serious consideration that all men of outstanding success in all walks of life are men who concentrate the major portion of their thoughts and efforts upon some definite purpose or chief aim. The habit of focusing his mind upon a definite chief aim through the principles of concentration. Concentration develops the power of persistence and enables one to master all forms of temporary defeat. Every human being is ruled by the law of habit. Because this is true, the person who learns to build his habits to order practically controls the major cause of successful achievement. Concentration is the principle through which one may build one's habits to order. It has been correctly said that we first make our habits and our habits then make us. They have habits of mind and habits of body. There is no point of compromise between a man and his habits. Either he controls his habits or his habits control him. The successful man understands this truth, forces himself to build the sort of habits by which he is willing to be controlled. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Your financial condition is not the result of chance or accident. It reflects perfectly the nature of your dominating thoughts, desires, and aims. In analysis of men who have accumulated huge fortunes, I studied practically the source of those fortunes in every case, discovered that they represented the consummation of the state of mind of those who have accumulated them, until concentrated thought externalized itself in physical reality. Thinking is the hardest work that any man can do. Your employee does not control the sort of service you render. You control that. And it is that thing that makes or breaks you. Chapter 8. Initiative and Leadership Initiative means doing things without being told to do them. It means the selection of a definite aim and the building of the plans for the achievement of that aim. The Major Attributes of Initiative and Leadership Know definitely what you want. Build a practical plan or plans for the achievement of that which you want. Do not become discouraged no matter what obstacles you may meet. Do not be influenced by others to abandon your plans or your aim. Have no set hours of labor. The leader must devote to his task whatever hours are necessary for success. Concentrate upon one thing at a time as you cannot dissipate thought and energy and still be efficient. Persistence is the keynote to success for all great leaders. Act quickly without waiting to be told by others what to do. A man is paid, not merely for which he knows, but more practically for what he does with what he knows, or that which he can get others to do. Successful men never wait for others to show them what to do or how to do it. They take the initiative themselves, appoint themselves to leadership, and list the necessary assistance in capital, and forge ahead despite all opposition. Self-confidence is one of the essentials for success in leadership. One of the natural tendencies of the human nature is that of the willingness to follow the man with great self-confidence. No one wishes to follow a man who does not seem to be sure of himself. A real leader is always persistent and never accepts a temporary defeat as failure. The leader who changes his mind often soon loses the confidence of his followers. When a leader changes his mind, often he thereby outs his followers on notice that he is not sure of himself, and if he isn't sure of himself, how may he expect his followers to be sure of him? A man always does his best work when he feels that he has been acting upon his own initiative and knows he must assume full responsibility for his actions. Uses persuasion, not power. There are two types of leaders in the world. One resorts to power and controls his followers through fear. The other resorts to persuasion and controls his followers through able salesmanship. Kindness is more powerful than compulsion. The law of compensation isn't always swift, but it is certain as the setting of the sun. An educated person is not merely the one who has the knowledge, but the one who knows where to get the knowledge when needed. Chapter 11. Neutralizing your perspective buyer's mind. A neutral or favorable mind of a prospective buyer should complement confidence, interest, and motive. The three subjects of confidence, interest, and motive have been attended to, 
the salesman has reached a point at which the sale may be closed. The art of the scientific salesmanship may be described as a three-act drama consisting of Act 1, Interest. This must be created by neutralizing the mind of the prospective buyer and establishing confidence. Act 2, Desire. Desire must be developed through the proper presentation of motive. And Act 3, Action. Action or the close can be induced only be the proper presentation of the two preceding acts. Words alone will not sell. Words woven into combination of thought which create desire will sell. The 10 major factors on which confidence is built. Number 1. Follow the habit of rendering more service and better services than you are paid to render. 2. Enter into no transaction that does not benefit as nearly alike as possible. Everyone it affects. Make no statement which you do not believe to be true, no matter what the temporary advantages a falsehood might seem to offer. Have a sincere desire in your heart to be of the greatest possible service to the largest number of people. And cultivate a wholesome admiration for people. Like them better than you like money. And do your best to live as well as you preach your own philosophy of business. Actions speak louder than words. Accept no favors, large or small, without giving favors in return. And ask nothing of any person without believing that you have a right to that for which you ask. Enter into no arguments with any person over trivial or non-essential details. And spread the sunshine of good cheer wherever and whenever you can. No man trust a joy killer. Confidence is the basics of all harmonious relationships. The salesman who overlooks this fact is unfortunate. He can never become a master salesman. This means he limits his earning capacities and circumscribes his possibilities of advancement. There are two major occasions which cause men and women to talk and therefore advertise favorably or unfavorably a business when they think they have been cheated and when they have received a fairer treatment than expected. All people are like this. They are impressed by the law of contrast. Anything unusual or unexpected, whether it impresses favorably or unfavorably, makes a lasting impression. Whatever you possess, material, mental, or spiritual, you must use it or lose it. If you are successful, remember that somewhere, sometime, someone gave you a lift or an idea that started you in the right direction. Remember also that you were indebted to life until you help some less fortunate person just as you were helped. Part 2. A negative mind spawns only negative ideas. It is a physical impossibility for a negative mind to generate positive thoughts. The habit of negative thinking generates more and more negative thoughts. Develop the habit of eliminating negative thoughts the moment they appear. Chapter 13. Choosing your job. The majority of people devote more time to thinking about money they want or need than they do about creating ways and means of earning that amount through an equivalent of service. 98% of people of the world may be considered failures from the viewpoint of earnings and occupation. Also, 98% of people holding positions have drifted into them and remain there because they lack the power of decision to choose more suitable positions. Performing labor which one does not like is one of the greatest tragedies of civilization. Possession of personal power and use of it are two different things. Happiness is the ultimate height towards every human being is striving. No man can be happy without some form of occupation. I refuse to believe what you say unless it harmonizes with what you do. Chapter 14. Selecting a definite major aim as your life work. Singleness of purpose is a quality without which no one may attain to outstanding success. This is the age of specialization. It is also an age of keen competition which does not favor the person who cannot excel in some specific occupation. The five fundamental steps to your success. Number one, choice of a definite or a definite goal to be attained. Development of sufficient power to attain one goal. Perfection of a practical plan for attaining one's goal. Accumulation of specialized knowledge necessary for the attainment of one's goal. And persistence in carrying out your plan. Some of the advantages of a definite aim. First, singleness of purpose forces one to specialize and specialization tends toward perfection. Second, a definite aim permits one to develop the capacity to reach decisions quickly and firmly. And third, definiteness of purpose enables one to master the habit of procrastination, 
Fourth, definiteness of purpose saves the time and energy one would otherwise waste while wavering between two or more possible courses of action. And fifth, a definite of purpose serves as a roadmap which charts a direct route to the end of one's journey. And sixth, definiteness of purpose fixes one's habits so that they are taken over by the subconscious mind and used as a motivating force involuntarily in driving towards one's goal. And seventh, definiteness of purpose develops self-confidence and attracts the confidence of other people. Drifting people are like rudderless ships and all the voyages of their life abound in shallows and miseries. History is rich in the recital of men who have hitched their wagons to a star, a single star, and ridden it into the heights of great achievement. With what mind or intention? Those who know where they are going usually get there. Brawn brings about a daily wage. The price of it is fixed by the law of supply and demand. General services rendered by one who is not specialized brings but little more than brawn. Brains, when marketed through a definite aim, has no fixed price. The sky is the limit in the marketing of the specialized talent. Those are statements of obvious fact. Yet 98% of every 100 people fail all through life because they do not follow the principles of working with the definiteness of purpose. Every failure will teach you a lesson that you need to learn if you will keep your eyes and ears open and be willing to be taught. Every adversity is usually a blessing in disguise. Without reverses and temporary defeat, you would never know what sort of metal of which you are made. Chapter 15. The Habit of Doing More Than You're Paid For The habit of rendering more service and better service than one is paid to render is an absolute essential to the advantageous marketing of personal services. The capacity to assume responsibility is the quality that brings the highest monetary returns. If you render no more service than you are paid to render, then it is absolutely you are not entitled to any more pay. This is a fact against which there is no argument. Goodwill asset is generally known as one's reputation for efficiency. Every individual who works for a salary naturally wants more money and a better position. Not every such individual, however, understands that better positions and greater pay come as the result of motive and the greatest of all motives with which these desirable benefits may be attracted is that rendering more service and better service than one is paid to render. People sometimes outgrow their positions and their employers. You are a merchant. You have the equivalent of a commodity to market. That equivalent is your personal services. Use the same principles of sound judgment in your marketing your services that a successful merchant uses in marketing his merchandise. As long as you're willing to let life push you around, it will. The customer is always right. Giving before trying to get. He profits most who serves best. The odds against the person who tried to get without giving an equivalent apply to the person who attempts to collect, pay before delivering adequate service just as they do to people who gamble. Those who try to harvest before sowing generally believe themselves wise enough to beat the game. It cannot be done. Most men can cheat others occasionally without detection, but no man can cheat others without observation by his own conscious, and that conscious is an official record on one's acts and thoughts. It writes the record of every thought and deed into the fabric of one's character. A clear conscience is an asset comparable to no one. E.M. Slater became the most successful hotel man in the world by rendering more service and better service than his guests were asked to pay for. Chapter 16. Your Pleasing Personality To negotiate with others without friction is a rare ability. It is necessarily in marketing personal services effectively. A pleasing personality is an asset without which it is, is difficult to market personal services or to keep them marketed. A pleasing personality is one which has flexibility and adaptability sufficient to permit an individual to harmonize with any environment and the necessary magnetism to dominate through attraction. A pleasing personality consists of many qualities, the more important of which are good showmanship, harmony with self, definiteness of purpose, appropriateness of clothing, posture and carriage of the body, voice, serenity of purpose, choice of language, poise, a keen sense of humor, unselfishness, facial expression, 
positive thought, enthusiasm, a sound body, imagination, tact, versatility, the art of being a good listener, the art of forceful speech, and personal magnetism. Have something to say which is worth listening to and say it with all the enthusiasm at your command. Every human being carries with him what is known as the individual atmosphere. Every business and every place of employment has also a distinctive atmosphere which consists of the combined personalities of those who work there. A person with a dominating personality of pleasing nature may so color the atmosphere of the place he works that the spirit of the entire place will be pleasing. On the other hand, one person who has a dominating personality of a negative nature may transmit that personality to everyone in the place of business so that the atmosphere of the place becomes displeasing and unpleasant. Every business is the extent shadow of one person. The positive or pleasing atmosphere value of a place of business, while it is an intangible asset, is one of the greatest assets any business can have. Such an atmosphere may be had only through a combination of positive individual personalities. The major factors of a negative personality. Disloyalty, dishonesty, greed, envy and hatred, jealousy, anger, fear, revenge, fault finding, peddling scandal, uncontrollable enthusiasm, pervocation, escaping responsibility for mistakes through alibis, exaggeration, egotism, obscenity, and selfishness. All forms of self-praise are easily recognized as evidence of inferiority complexes. Therefore, one's motto should be deeds, not words. Be your most severe critic. A pleasing personality will help you market your services effectively. Sound character will help you keep your services marketed permanently. And chapter 17, we're nearly there. Cooperation. Inability to cooperate stood at the head of the list of the causes of failure. The time you put on a job is not the correct measure of your worth. That is determined by the quality and the quantity of your work, plus the influences you have on others by your mental attitude. Your position is nothing more than your opportunity to show that what sort of ability you have. You will get out of it exactly what you put into it, no more and no less. A big position is but the sum total of numerous little positions well filled. Chapter 18, How to Create a Job Organized imagination brings the highest price of any form of ability. The world stands in need of men who will use their imaginations. The country is faced not by the necessity of solving one's problem, but the necessity of solving hundreds of problems. Pick out any one of these problems and work out, through imagination, its solution and your core problem of acquiring money will be solved. Not all of the new ways of doing business, nor the best ways, have yet been found. The future will call for still more new ways. This need is your opportunity. Use your imagination and convert that opportunity into fortune. The greatest cure for loneliness, discouragement, and discontentment is work that produces a healthy sweat. Chapter 19. How to choose your occupation. Decision in connection with the choice of a life work is one of the two most important decisions which young people have the responsibility of making. The other decision is in connection with the selection of a mate in marriage. Every young man and woman ought to be able to, number one, operate a computer efficiently. Number two, take notes speedily. And three, keep a set of books accurately before selecting a vocation. Knowledge of these subjects is of vital importance in the successful conduct of any business or profession. A business college training is an absolute necessity to the person who aspires to a position as an executive in the field of business today for the reason that executives must have understudy experience of a nature which can be acquired only through business college preparation. The urge of necessity is a great blessing to most people. It forces them to do the things they should do but too often would not do without the pressure of necessity. The faith and persistence to accept defeat as being nothing more than an experience from which something of value is learned. Life is filled with obstacles which must be surmounted. Only those who have the stamina and willingness to fight can win. Don't ask too much of life, that's all. In the final analysis, if you get just a little success and a lot of love, they'll hold your hand up as a winner. The happiest people are those who have learned to mix play with their work and to bind the two together with enthusiasm. Chapter 20. How to Budget Your Time 
eight hours for sleep, eight hours for work, four hours for recreation and health, two hours for study and preparation, and two hours for extra service for the benefit of others without pay, equals 24 hours. Remember again that you are where you are and what you are because of your own conduct. You cannot be successful without paying the price of success. He must begin ascertaining what his weaknesses and when they have been discovered, he must form habits which will either eliminate or bridge those weaknesses so they will not work against him. We are all more or less the victim of habit. Watch your habits during this eight hour period because those habits hold the secret of your future. No matter who you are or what you may be your calling in life, this period offers only hope available to the person who is poverty stricken but desires riches. It is the starting point of the person who aspires to a position of independence and freedom. When you come to analyze yourself for the purpose of discovering how many of the causes of failures are standing in your way, you will discover that most, if not all, of those disclosed by your analysis have grown out of your habits of waste during this eight-hour period. We are all victims of the power of suggestion. Most of our habits are acquired through the influence of other people around us. Excuses take a financial toll as well as a physical toll. Nothing can be marketed effectively unless the product to be marketed has value. The principle of singleness of purpose. You have the power to create anything you can imagine. With proper action on the ideas produced by your imagination, you will achieve success. And the last chapter, chapter 21, your master plan for getting a position. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. Know the difference between failure and temporary defeat. And say that you never accept defeat as anything more than the inspiration to make a fresh and more determined start. Understand tolerance to mean an open mind to all subjects, towards all people. It is well worth remembering that a client or customer is the most important factor in any business. If you don't think so, try to get along without him or her for a while. Let me emphasize that you should use your own imagination and initiative when it comes to actual writing of the letter of application. There are no lazy men. There may appear to be a lazy man is only an unfortunate person who has not found the work which he is best suited. And that's a wrap on this amazing book, How to Sell Your Way Through Life by Napoleon Hill, an absolute classic. Look back on our channel for previous video book summaries and subscribe to our channel for future books. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, hashtag bestbookbits. If you liked the video and want to buy the book, click the link in the video description to purchase from Amazon. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned a thing or two. Have a great day.